Three minutes to go. Ooh, he's getting nervous. Can he do it? James McDonald is going to attempt to break the world record for cycling non-stop for 24 hours. And he's chosen here, the Newport Velodrome, as the place to do it. But can he do it? Oh, lost half a kilometre. My knees are starting to get sore. This is going to do You need to focus, Francis. This is the difference between a world record and a good goal. Don't try this at home. I am currently en route to the velodrome in Newport, South Wales. Throughout my career, this is the velodrome I trained and raced at. And I've got to say, it's bringing back a lot of memories. Actually, that's where I used to go to the toilet before a race. But I'm not back here for me. I'm back here to witness a world record attempt. The record James is trying to beat is 585.2 miles, 941.8 kilometers, all ridden in the space of 24 hours. This record was set by Christoph Strasser on the 14th to the 15th of October in 2017. Christoph Strasser is an Austrian ultra cyclist, probably the best ultra cyclist of his generation. He won the race across America and insane six times. So this record is gonna be really, really tough to beat. But before he embarks on this epic challenge, I think we should get to know the man behind it all. Now, James, I'm right in saying that, uh, well, breaking records isn't your day job. No, and I work full time. This is just a, a hobby. <sighs> That's some hobby. So you literally work a nine to five job and by night you're breaking records, basically. Yeah, I have to try and fit in my training, which is difficult sometimes. You know, did cycling from a young age, uh, always enjoyed it. Uh, I, when I was younger, I did a lot of BMX, and, uh, but I got injured and I was told I had to give up on that and, uh, when I was about 17. So uh, I, I took up road cycling, uh, just the usual sort of amateur club racing, time trials and so on. Um, but I gave that up a little bit to when I was at university and early in career and really just sort of picked it up again when I was um, about 35. Where I am now probably started from um, doing the John O'Groats to Land's End for the first time in 2011. And then I realized that actually the long distance stuff is quite suited to me. After 2013, when I did uh, the last of the three um, end to ends, that's started to look at how technology can, can help endurance sports and started to read up about it. The, um, the company I worked for, uh, Cisco, were sort of starting to move into the IoT space, looking at uh, telemetry and sensors in all sorts of different verticals. And sports was really of interest to me. And I, and I really wanted to see what, what we could do with new technology. Uh, things were starting to come out about body-worn sensors that were, they were just being developed. So that was where the idea came, let's put the technology together because the greater insights will, will surely no doubt help an athlete perform e either a higher performance level or be more reliable, which is the ethos behind using technology to do the race across America because the, the, uh, the rate of people fail, failing is really high mm. and they usually fail because they're not pacing themselves properly. That's where I uh, wanted to try and put the two things together. 20 odd months ago, uh, I. I I phoned uh, Tim Wade at Die Data and I said, hey, this is what I was thinking of doing. We've done some initial tests, but the premise is, can we use the technology to, to get me across the line? So I've known James for about five years and this isn't his first mad escapade. No. Um, so <laughs> from already, what I've heard, yeah. it's, it's, it's definitely not gonna be the last. No, either. it's not, I, I'm sure, but he won't tell you that right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, he will probably ask him in a month's time once yeah, he's done the event. I maybe will. maybe it'll be a different answer. Yeah. But um, yeah, so he's done a few different things. He's did the race across America, and that's sort of where I first got to, to know him. And it was a similar thing there. You know, he, he was going to ride for 3,000 miles. And the, the, the request was, or the, the thinking was, was how, do, how do we help his support team make smarter decisions? You know, yeah. is he, how is he doing? Is he, is he keeping, his, sustaining his power? What's his heart rate like? All that sort of stuff. So we, we worked together and created a solution that, that enabled the guys in the car to have that data real time there. And that enabled them to, well, I mean, he finished it. What we're doing is we're, we're trying to help James's performance team make decisions on the fly while James is doing the record attempt. So if you can imagine, he's going to be on the track. Yeah. So how do we get that information from him to the performance coach so that they can say, you know, if you could consume some fuel for us, please go faster, go slower, you know, power up, power down, whatever, whatever he needs to do. Use data, use information, allow the team to make the right choices around my pace and nutrition, calories and uh, burned and so on. And so we'll, they will watch that 
with, with all the data, they'll look at everything and then they can make a judgment call, just like they do in Formula One. You know, they have a, a, a oh, bunch yeah. of engineers back, at, back in the factory, all looking at the telemetry, what the car is doing, and then they will check everything and then they will highlight any issues. And that's really what we're doing here. The sensors are under the track, so the normal AMP Plus sensors that you, you would have, like your heart rate monitor, your power meter, go directly to the sensors on the track. This is truly an incredible challenge. And to be quite honest, I am really nervous for him. I'd find it difficult just to sit on the bike for 24 hours, let alone ride around in circles at 40 kilometers per hour with the ambition of riding 945 kilometers in one go. The bike of choice for this record is this, the BMC Track Machine TR01. Interestingly, he's gone for a massive 62 tooth chainring on the front and he's gone for a 17 on the back, which equates to a 98 inch gear. The reason for the big chain rings is because the efficiency in a big, big, so that means that the angle the chain has to travel is a lot smoother. He's also got look exact pedals, which is the SRM ones, so he'll be able to track his power. He's gonna have three Garmin's so that he can see exactly the time. Not three on the bike, but he's gonna be able to swap them because Garmin's don't work forever. Also, he's got two disc wheels. He's got the Mavic Comets, and these are probably the most aerodynamic track wheels out there. So he's got these on board, and he's pumped his tires up to 140 PSI in both front and rear. One last thing, he's got a sticker on the top tube. Take the risk or lose the chance. Something that I've been wondering is how James is going to be able to fuel his body during this attempt. Remember, he can't stop and at that rate he's going to be burning a lot of calories and it is going to be imperative that he keeps his energy stores topped up. After all, this could be the difference between breaking the record and not. We spoke with nutritionalists and physiologists and we also looked at James's power and heart rate data to get a starting data point of how many calories we think James is going to burn. Yeah. And then once we put that into practice out on the road and then on the track, we then discovered that those calories, it was just a data point and James's stomach, you know, it can only take so much food. And we started winding the calories down um, to come up with the, the number that we're working with now for him on the track. These are his pureed baby food. So we've got a few different flavors here and just different numbers of calories um, for each pouch so that we do have the plan of what he's gonna eat per hour, but it might come that perhaps he doesn't want the gels, so we know that we've got some other Normal foods. Yeah, other foods there. The biggest challenge is actually uh, keeping him moving. So like, you know, stopping for toilet breaks. So if we stop, Have you got a strategy for that? Yeah, so we've got a toilet that's going to be right on track side, a little tent that he can jump in. So he, he's a bit like Bambi when he comes off the bike. Yeah. He's a bit unsteady on his feet. So somebody will take the bike. We have to leave it where it, he comes off and get him back onto the track. Somebody will then help him, which probably it's usually me, into the toilet. And whilst he's in the toilet, we will change the battery, take the opportunity to change the battery on his, his packs for his food communications. If he needs eye drops or anything like that, then he gets to do these things. If he needs any painkillers, paracetamol. Chamois cream. Chamois cream, uh, he does that. <laughs> uh, we're committed, but we're not there. <laughs> The scene is set for this 24 hour record attempt. We've got 15 minutes till go time. And it's pretty tense in here, I have to say. Everyone's feeling the nerves for, for James in there. I wonder what's going through his head right now as he embarks on this truly insane effort. And he's off. 24 hours to go. What is going through his mind right now? So it's one lap down. Now it's time for him to get in the zone. After all, he's got a long way to go. It's all about getting in that nice position, relaxing. After all, all the preparation is done and it's now up to him, the bike and the record. In order for James to break this record, he needs to cover more than 3,767 laps. 
His team have worked out that with his custom aerodynamic skin suit and aerodynamic bike, he needs to average a whopping 213 to 217 watts. Now this doesn't sound a lot, but after 24 hours, that is some feat. 14 laps down, he's settling in to a nice rhythm now. But the question is, can he hold it? Can he hold 40 kilometers per hour for that looming 24 hours? It's been around five minutes, and to be honest, I'll be getting tired already. Five hundred and sixty one laps down and James has just scratched the surface of his 24 hour record attempt. And to be quite honest, I'm absolutely shattered just watching him. I don't I don't know how he's doing this. Like, What do you think of for 24 hours? Hi, James. How are you, how are you feeling? Oh, oh pressure. <laughs> um, what's going through your head right now? Lots of things. <laughs> uh, um, uh, yeah, I mean, there's trying to focus. It's so hot in here compared to training rides. It's uh, it's quite hard to breathe. I I heard uh, Gary at the beginning say, "Imagine you're on a road in Mallorca with the sun on your back and the wind in your hair." Is does that kind of help um, when you're when you're riding? Uh huh. Yeah, because you go from disassociation to association. So you know, I can you know, if you're focusing on the track and the revs, I mean, uh, then that's one thing, but then you can drift off and think about where I've been, you know, right, riding through Monument Valley, across Kansas, <laughs> and, you know, the feeling what that's like, having a, a never-ending road where you see the horizon at 50 miles away. Uh, so that's pretty much what this is like, really, especially if you don't really look at the corners. How, how are you feeling the position? Um, is are you, are you quite happy sitting there or do you need a stretch every now and again? Well, the stretching you probably see me do is mainly uh, perineum related, uh, mainly try and move around, get a bit of blood flow. Wow, well you're doing incredible and uh, uh, keep smashing it mate. Thanks man. James has just completed 1,000 laps and with Gary as coach. Gary, what's been going on for the last 1,000 laps? Yeah, um, we had an amazing start. Um, where we're at right now, his fuel strategy has been absolutely bang on. So he's managed to digest all the food and we just had a really rocky hour for the last hour um, and we just lost a wee bit of time. So right now we are sitting about 1.1 kilometres behind the world record. So in order to make that back up, we've got to keep on top of it right away. And um, so we've increased his cadence from the 86 to 87. He's now sitting at 88, 89. And um, we need to do this for um, at least the next one hour. And we're going to be clawing back about 10 meters per lap at that. 88 revs, 10 meters per lap. Come on, mate. Come on. We believe in you, mate. Come on. Everything that you've got, just hold 88. Come on, James. Up, 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 up. We've lost half a kilometre now since we started this. We're going to go faster, bit James. Yeah. Over and above. So how do we? What's going to work for him? What's going to get him going? Just give it everything that you've got. We believe in you, James. You've got the capabilities of doing this. Go and get him then. Go and f***ing catch him. Twenty-four hours in the saddle. Ouch. How do you stay comfortable? Well, as coach says, he's just got to get on with it and add a lot of chamois cream. Yeah, rather him than me. Go on, James. He's been going around for eight hours, over a thousand laps. And to be honest, it's making me pretty sleepy. Still going. It's coming up to 11.20 in the evening. 
grab myself a coffee. I guess it's time that we go and check in with Gary and find out how he's getting on. Right, Gary, I've had a little bit of a break. It's, well, he's done 1,652 laps. It's 11.30, I'm feeling pretty tired. But what, what's going on? What's happening? How is he looking? How is he feeling? Well, Hank, we had a small situation. Uh, unfortunately, James had a crash. Yeah. A crash? Yes. He stopped? Yep. Are you kidding me? So this is world, world record out the window. We've got a plan B. Now James has changed tact and he's going for the 1000 kilometer challenge currently held by Marco Ballon. And with a time of 27 hours, 31 minutes and nine seconds held in 2010. And he averaged a speed of 36.34 kilometers per hour. Now James has stopped for 23 minutes during the crash in the bandages. James has lost all his stoppage time, meaning he is gonna be on the bike from now on all the way up until 3.30 p.m. the next day. James, can you um, let us know how the incident happened and, uh, and what the, the plan is moving forwards now? Yeah, um, well, earlier in the day it was really hot and uh, I poured some of uh, the water down my back to try to cool me a little bit. And I went offline when I did it in case any went on the track. And then quite a bit later on, I uh, moved up onto that line just because you know you move around a little bit sometimes. Yeah, of course. And I was out the saddle, and uh, the front wheel hit that and just completely <laughs> went away from me. So it took about 20 meters to stop. <laughs> that's that's never fun sliding across a track. 40 kilometers an hour, yeah. <laughs> no. Um, and and then you kind of sat down. W was there a big feeling of you know what happens now? Well. When I, when I finally came to a stop and then figured out how I was going to get <laughs> out from under my bike. Yeah. Um, yeah, I sat down. Um, so, you know, any, any stoppage is a real killer for the average speed. And I was already behind. Um, so I just thought that was it. Yeah. Um, but then apparently, apparently there was a plan B. How are you feeling about that? You, is, is that another tall order? Is, what, what's, what's, your, what's going through your mind? Well, you don't have to be quite so quick for it, uh, apparently. Um, I'm learning this <laughs> today. Um, but it is quite a bit lot further. Um, so I'm trying to get my head around uh, being not finishing at midday, but later. And my knees are starting to get sore because, you know, obviously the, rep the repetition. It's now coming up to 12 o'clock in the evening, but he's not got a 24 hour challenge. He's now got a 27 hour challenge ahead. He's not even halfway. This is a battle of endurance and mind power. It's currently 9.15. I didn't leave the velodrome until about 12.30, one o'clock last night. Let's go and find out how he's getting on. He's gonna be tired now. What? Where is everyone? Hello? 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 Having arrived at the velodrome to find it empty, I later found out that unfortunately James had to stop at around 2 a.m. The reason being he was just finding it too unbearable to sit in that position after the big crash. It didn't go to plan. Um, yeah, around uh, eight hours into it, uh, I uh, came off the bike very quickly, yeah. <laughs> 40 k's an hour. Um, and uh, before I knew it, I was sliding along the track, uh, figuring out how to stop. There's a huge uh, emotional investment in uh, the whole project to even just get to the, st the start line, Hank. And um, yeah, you, you feel it for him because you can see the, the disappointment there. There's no recovery here. So in a, in a multi-day event where you do have at least well, outside you've got hills and you've got maybe tailwinds. There's no recovery, it's zero recovery here. He's a fighter right up to the end. And, um, you know, you can see that he emptied himself and that's like all that I know James would be happy with. And as a coach, that's all you ask from all your athletes. Um, so it was a tough one. It was really, really tough watching him uh, pull in there to the finish, but ultimately he, he gave it his all. We've learned so much um, about about the, the nutrition, about the pacing. Um, I'm the fittest and strongest I've ever been in my life. And uh, yeah, I, I wish I'd had this fitness when I did RAM. 
uh, but uh, it, it's, it's, we've learned a huge amount in the last 20 months. Of course we're going to go home and, and sit down and uh, evaluate the performance and look at ways of moving forward but um, no, James is a fighter and I'm sure he'll be back and he'll be on the phone in a couple of days with, with some other new project. Yeah. There is an awful lot of things that I've managed to do thankfully uh, that, that um, I wasn't sure about every step of the way and uh, with the right help and support and dedication there yeah, you can absolutely surprise yourself. Wow, what a ride. Has this inspired you to do something or even try something incredible? If it has, then let us know in the comment section below. And if you've enjoyed going along this emotional roller coaster with us, then make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. And for more GCN action, why don't you click over there?